Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome to another edition of No DQ and A video right here on NoDQ.com, the YouTube channel and No DQ and A videos affiliate, RingsideNews.com. The road to WrestleMania continues to march on. NoDQ.com is your source for all the very latest WrestleMania news and rumors. With that being said, let's get down to your questions from Spring.me slash Aaron Rift. First one today comes from Rock Buster. Hi Aaron, to avoid being too predictable, do you think the best option for WrestleMania would be for Triple H to beat Daniel Bryan in a screw job finish and then for Hulk Hogan to enter Bryan into the main event? I would not do that. I would just go with the safe, predictable route. If people complain about it being predictable, then so be it. You cannot please everybody all the time. I think that doing a screw job finish and then having Hogan save Daniel Bryan and put him in the main event would just make Daniel Bryan look weak. I think that if you're going to go all the way with Daniel Bryan and have him win the WWE title, it's best to make him look as strong as possible. The WWE World Champion should be seen as the best guy on the roster. Daniel Bryan should go out there. He should beat Triple H. Not only beat him, I think he should make Triple H tap out, clean in the middle, and then go on to win the main event and make the title something special. Daniel Bryan winning the championship and celebrating and earning it. That's how I would do it. I would not do a screw job finish. And I got another question here about um, the order of that match, Triple H and Daniel Bryan. Where should it be on the card? I think that it would be best to put it as the opening match so you have the story from the beginning of WrestleMania and then you conclude the story at the end. I think that you could have something where Triple H comes out and says that he's not going to have Daniel Bryan raised up to his level and he would rather instead sacrifice himself and lower himself to Daniel Bryan's level because Daniel Bryan doesn't deserve to be in a high profile match at WrestleMania and therefore Daniel Bryan and Triple H is the opening match at WrestleMania because that's all Daniel Bryan is good for according to Triple H. I think that that would be a good way to go and have that be the opening match and that be the reason why it's the opening match. Um, you know, and you look back to like WrestleMania 10 with uh, Bret Hart and Owen Hart opening WrestleMania off and, and giving it a strong start. I think that Triple H and Daniel Bryan would, would be an excellent way to kick off the WrestleMania pay-per-view. All right, this next one comes from the Jobinator. Hey, Aaron, if Daniel Bryan does end up being added to the main event and even winning it, wouldn't you say that lowers the prestige of the Royal Rumble? Thanks. I don't really think that it lowers the prestige. I mean, the, the prestige was lowered years ago when Alberto Del Rio won it and then was in the opening match at WrestleMania. And then the following year, Sheamus won it, and then he was in the opening match at WrestleMania. So the value of the Royal Rumble has already gone down in that regard. But I don't think it makes all that much a difference to most fans. I think that fans will just be happy that Daniel Bryan got the big win. And, uh, you know, it, it doesn't really matter. It, it's fine having the Royal Rumble win or lose every now and then. I wouldn't make a habit out of it, but I also wouldn't be having the Royal Rumble winner in the opening match at WrestleMania. All right, this next one comes from TNA Apologist. Two questions. What do you think of Rockstar Spud? Personally, I find him to be a disposable part of the roster. Dixie Carter is just as annoying with or without him. Also, what do you think of Sam Shaw? Well, regarding Rockstar Spud, I like him. I think that he does a better job of being Brad Maddox than Brad Maddox. I think that Rockstar Spud is the type of guy that you want to see somebody kick his ass. He's like this little pipsqueak, like a Jimmy Hart type of character. You just want to see somebody uh, punch him right in the face. And I think that's a good heel. I think when he comes out, you know, he's good being... Dixie Carter's sidekick and running his mouth, and you just want to see somebody um, get a piece of him. Um, regarding Sam Shaw, I'm not sold on the character yet. I thought that the match at Lockdown with him and Mr. Anderson was not too good. wasn't a big fan of that match, and um, you know I, I do think the character is interesting. This this creepy stalker character, but uh, so far I'm not sold on it. And maybe it will improve. Maybe it'll get better, but. Uh, right now, I mean, I'm, I'm just not feeling it. But I do give TNA credit. You know, I'll say this. I've said it before. I'll say it again. 
I do give TNA credit for pushing new stars and trying to create new stars and you know a lot of it's not working but at least they're making the effort and I'd like to see them do more of this kind of stuff in the future pushing new stars and you know as much as I love Christopher Daniels and Frankie Kazarian and even Samoa Joe it might be too late now it might be too late to give them a big push and put them in the spotlight they've been around for so many years and they've only gotten to a certain level and as much as I hate to say it it might be time to let those guys go and and focus on building new stars I mean it's been 10 years since those guys first came to TNA um, you know in the case of Christopher Daniels and Frankie Gazarian so you know you, you need you need some fresh blood in there so I, I do applaud TNA for what they're doing and at least making the effort all right, this one comes from Dave451, or 451985. I always mess that up. Assuming they are still champs going in, who should the Usos defend against at WrestleMania? Well, initially I thought that they should be facing the Outlaws at WrestleMania with the Outlaws losing the tag team titles to them. Now that they have already won the titles, I don't know if I would go with the Usos versus the New Age Outlaws at WrestleMania at this point. I think your best option is to have a multiple tag team match, maybe a, uh, a four corners tag team match. That way you have something different uh, from your usual matches on Raw. I mean, I think the Usos already faced Ryback and Curtis Axel um, in a regular tag team match. So, you know, do something that you haven't done. Do, do a match with four teams in one match. And also you, you get several guys on the WrestleMania card. Now, I know you already have the Battle Royal, and a lot of guys are going to be in that, but you could also do this match to get several other tag teams on the show as well. All right, next question here. If you were Batista, how upset would you be about the way you were booked upon your return just to get the biggest heat in recent memory? If I was Batista, I wouldn't be bothered by it. The bottom line is Batista's coming back. He's making big money. He's in a, a uh, main event position in WWE, at least for the time being, and people are reacting to him. The worst thing that could happen to Batista is he would come back and nobody cared. But people do react to him. Um, you know, they boo him. They call him Batista, but... They still react to him. They're still making noise when he comes out. Uh, he's getting an emotional reaction out of people. So that is a positive. And I think he should see that as a positive and just go with it. You know, he, he works better as a heel, in my opinion. His run in 2010, in my opinion, was the best work of his career. So he might as well just take a negative and turn it into a positive and just be the, the most arrogant, cocky heel imaginable and... Uh, you know, it makes for very entertaining television, in my opinion. So I, I'm, I'm happy with how things are being done, and I'm glad WWE isn't fighting it anymore, and they're just letting him be a full-fledged heel, and they're not waiting until after WrestleMania. They're doing the right thing, and I think Batista is fine with just going out there and making money and, and getting people talking about him. All right, one more question here from No Ikis. Daniel Bryan has great in-ring ability, but his promos and gimmick are childish and corny. Will we ever see him get more dark and vicious, or will he be the new Cena? I actually dislike him more now than when he was a heel. You know, several people have asked me about Daniel Bryan. Will the fans turn on him if he becomes um, the WWE World Champion, and he's a focal point, and he's the top guy? Um... I don't think fans will ever turn on Daniel Bryan. I mean, when CM Punk was champion for 434 days, uh, people didn't turn on him. And I don't think I don't think people will turn on Daniel Bryan. He's one of those guys that people will always cheer for, uh, pretty much no matter what WWE does with him. So I think that even if he becomes John Cena, and I mean, essentially he has become John Cena in a way. When was the last time that Daniel Bryan actually did a clean job? Every time he's lost. It's been because of outside interference, and he beat John Cena clean, and he's beaten Randy Orton clean several times. He's beaten all the top guys, and every time he loses, he gets screwed. So, I mean, Daniel Bryan has been booked like John Cena over the past several months, and, um, you know, even though he's the so-called underdog, he's still being positioned as a top-level guy who is, who is seen by the fans as the best person in the company. And, you know, like I said, the best guy in the company should be the champion. Uh, so, you know, if they're going to book him in that kind of fashion where, where he is above everybody else and it's clear that 
he only loses when he gets screwed. You know, that guy should be the champion. So, you know, I, I cannot blame WWE for the way they're booking him. And if fans want to complain about it, then so be it. But I, I, I think that only a minority will, will feel that way. You might have your, your vocal minority on the Internet that might complain. Um, and like I said, you cannot please everybody all the time. Somebody's not going to like Daniel Bryan being WWE champion and having a John Cena-like push. Um, but, you know, at least he can deliver in the ring. And, you know, the thing about Daniel Bryan, too, is he's going out there and he's almost like John Cena, where he has a very predictable move set at this point. When he makes his comeback, he does the same exact thing every match. You know, it's the same thing that John Cena does, same thing Randy Orton does. And, uh, you know, it, it's funny how he has essentially become... A, a WWE main event star in the sense that he goes out there and he has a you know very familiar move set and he does the same thing. Um, so you know it, it, it's just the, I think the positive here is that you're getting somebody fresh at the top. I think that that's really what fans want. You know fans are tired of the same guys in the main events, John Cena and Randy Orton, Batista. They want somebody new in that top position, and that person is Daniel Bryan. So. Uh, you know, maybe if Daniel Bryan is on top for 10 years, maybe fans will get tired of him at that point. But I, I don't see it happening anytime soon. All right, that'll do it for this edition of No DQ and a video. Thanks, as always, for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. YouTube.com slash No DQ CAW. Share this video on Facebook and Twitter. Tell a friend. And I will see you guys next time for another edition of No DQ and a video.